today we're starting a brand new video series on nozzles. Hi, my name is Matt Hinkle with Box Arm Training and today we're starting a video series on nozzles. This video is going to start off with an overview of the nozzle types, their uses, some of the advantages and disadvantages, a uh, little bit into the pressures of the nozzles and the flows, and then as we continue through this video series, we're going to break down each nozzle type and discuss in much more detail the advantages and disadvantages of each nozzle. So before we begin, I hear a lot of firefighters discuss nozzles, and it, it really intrigues me the fact that when we talk to law enforcement and military, they tend to know their weapon uh, like the back of their hand. They'll tell you exactly what caliber uh, round they're using, what the advantages and disadvantages of that round are. Uh, yet when we go to a firefighter and ask them about their nozzle, a lot of times they, they basically say that they open and close it and water comes out. Uh, and that's just not enough. This is your weapon. This is pretty much the only thing that stands between you and the fire. So if you don't know your nozzle, you need to learn it. Uh, and I understand that a lot of us don't get to pick which nozzle we use. That is often issued to you. Uh, so that's not, that's above your pay grade. That's something that's made in the decision above you, but it doesn't really matter. You, you need to know how to utilize your nozzle to the best advantage you can. So hopefully this series will give you a lot of insight into that. And we're going to go ahead and get started with an overview. The first nozzle we want to go over is the smoothbore nozzle. And basically this is the first nozzle that firefighters began to use. So there is no pattern adjustment on this nozzle. And the only way that you can change the gallonage is by changing out the size of the opening, the tip. So this nozzle, uh, has a tip that will spin off. This is an inch and a half to inch and a half uh, valve. So the tip sizes, when you spin them off, you can change the size of the opening to make it bigger or smaller, essentially making you have more or less water come out of the nozzle. So this nozzle operates at 50 PSI in general. And um, we're gonna go into more detail in the, in the remaining part of this video series about the pressures of these nozzles and some of the, the details within how people personally like to pressurize them. Uh, but the only way that you're gonna change the, the amount of water that comes out is by making this hole bigger or smaller. So uh, the advantages to that, very simple operation. Valve, nozzle, there's not very many moving parts, it's just a tip and valve. So they're very reliable. Uh, they don't get debris clogged up in them very easily because it's a big opening. And you have the ability to unscrew the tip and extend the line if you need to, or change out the tips for a variety of different conditions. It's also very lightweight, so you'll see this a lot in high-rise packs because it operates at a low nozzle pressure and is easy to carry. Um, so one of the biggest things I hear talked about is the reach and penetration of the nozzle, and that often gets um, misunderstood. So reach and penetration are two different things. Reach of the nozzle is actually physics. It's mass times velocity. So the more water that comes out of the nozzle at the higher pressure will go farther. Uh, however, there's a difference between reach and effective reach. If I take a fogger combination nozzle and I flow it at 100 PSI versus this nozzle at 50 PSI and they're flowing the same amount of water, the fogger combination nozzle could go a little bit farther than this nozzle, but effectively the fogger combination nozzle will rain droplets down over a wider area. The smoothbore nozzle effectively puts more water into the concentrated area than the fog can, simply because the stream's more uh, together, it's not quite as broken, and it won't flare off as it's, as it's flowing. So you'll eventually land more water in your target zone than you would with a fire combination nozzle. We're gonna go into a lot more details about this nozzle in the upcoming series, so make sure you come back to those uh, when we go over the, the details of this nozzle. So the next nozzle we wanna talk about is the fixed flow fog or combination nozzle. So now nozzles had the ability to adjust their patterns. We can actually make a straight stream or a full fog or anywhere in between. And this nozzle does not have the ability to adjust the gallonage. So easy for the pump operator to operate. It's a given pressure, just like the smooth bore. As you turn the pattern in and out, it doesn't change the amount of water that's flowing. It's just changing the pattern of the way that the nozzle operates or the, the, the stream shape. So, uh, this nozzle, a lot of them will have spinning teeth or some sort of, of design in the nozzle to break the water droplets up into smaller droplets. The reason fog and combination nozzles do that is to create more surface area in the water droplets to absorb more heat energy. Um, now that's a big debate between the smooth bores and the fog. We're going to go into much more detail in that in the next videos. But basically, the, a fog or combination nozzle can absorb more heat energy from the tiny water droplets, but 
where does that heat absorption take place? Does it take place near you or farther from you? And that's where we get into the penetration debate between a smooth bore and a fog or combination nozzle. So stay tuned for the future videos. We're going to go into a lot more detail about that. So the next nozzle we're going to talk about is the adjustable gallonage fog nozzle. So now the fog nozzle uh, or combination nozzle has the ability to not only change the pattern so that you can move the stream shape in and out, but you also have a dial uh, to turn the gallonage up and down. So essentially what you're doing with the, with the gallonage adjustment is you're moving the stem in and out. So this stem, uh, as it moves in and out, is essentially making the hole bigger and smaller. Just like on the smoothbore nozzle, the smoothbore, we change out the tips to make the hole bigger so that we get more water at the same pressure. This nozzle is the same way. You need to deliver a nozzle pressure to this nozzle. For instance, a 75 PSI nozzle. If I have this nozzle flowing at 75 PSI and I turn this dial to go up in gallonage, my nozzle pressure is actually going to drop because I just made the hole bigger. So I have to compensate for that on the pump panel and increase pressure to deliver the same amount of nozzle pressure to the nozzle with more flow. So uh, don't think with these nozzles that you can just simply turn this dial to get whatever gallonage it says on the nozzle. It has to still pump at the same nozzle pressure. It will not flow what it says it's going to flow unless you deliver the nozzle pressure that's appropriate to this nozzle. So it means you have to communicate with the pump operator to make sure if you make a change, they make sure they're comp they compensate for it on the pump panel. So the last nozzle we want to talk about is the automatic nozzle. So the automatic nozzle has the ability to change the nozzle pattern or the stream shape and also inside this nozzle it automatically adjusts to a varying amount of water that's moving through it. So essentially this is the automatic transmission versus the manually adjustable fog nozzle, fog or combination, where you manually turn gears to, to change the size of the opening. This one automatically changes the size of the opening. So this nozzle keeps the same nozzle pressure relatively to regardless of the amount of water that's moving through it. So it could be flowing 80 gallons a minute, could be flowing 150 gallons a minute. Regardless of the amount of water that's moving through it, it is a pressure regulating system basically in this nozzle to keep the same nozzle pressure. So that offers advantages and disadvantages. One, the advantage is during complex pump operations, this nozzle relatively maintains the same nozzle pressure. So uh, that's good if you have adequate flow. Uh, the bad part about automatic nozzle would be that regardless of the flow, it maintains good nozzle pressure so it can conceal uh, flow issues. So kinks in the line, things like that that inhibit the amount of water that's moving through your hose line or inadequate pump discharge pressure. The, the stream looks good, the reach looks good, but the flow is not good or, or could not be good. So the only way for you to know that that nozzle is flowing the correct amount of water is by having some type of flow meter or a, uh, a system that will allow you to, to see how much water is moving through this nozzle or an experienced nozzleman feeling the nozzle reaction and knowing that that is adequate. Thank you for watching the first video in our series. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to see the other videos. You'll also see this material posted on our website at www.boxalarmtraining.com. And then also make sure you go to our Facebook page and like the Facebook page. We release a lot more information on that Facebook page as well as other training resources that we know about. So take the time to view those resources. Make sure you subscribe and thank you for watching.